right. Thank you very much for your patience on that. I apologize for being just a couple of minutes late. And welcome to our joint meeting for the Katati City Council and the successor agency to the former Katati Community Redevelopment Agency. And today is Tuesday, January 8th of 2019. And if we could start our meeting with a roll call, please. Council Member Moore? Here. Council Member Harvey? Here. Mayor Deloso? Here. Vice Mayor Scalman? Here. Council Member Lamin? Here. And um, before we go into the Pledge of Allegiance, I do like to, uh, I'm going to follow what um, former Mayor Landman, since it's been a month since you were mayor now, um, was doing. I think this is a great thing and that way everybody will know other people here that, uh, um, as far as our council and staff. So my name is John DeLosso. I'm the mayor. Welcome to our council chambers. Uh, we have Vice Mayor Wendy Skillman to my left. And continuing left, we'll start with Council Member Mark Landman. Council Member Sue Harvey and Council Member John Moore. And we also have city staff available. Um, we have our city manager, Damian Obid, our city attorney, Robin Donahue, our community development director, Vicki Parker. I'm not doing this in order that you guys are sitting. I think you saw that already. Chief of Police, Michael Parrish, and our city engineer and director of public works, Craig Scott. And the person that makes this meeting happen and flow smoothly our city clerk, Lauren Burgess. Thank you, Lauren. All right, with that, I would um, actually ask our soon-to-be reserve police officer to come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And if everybody could please stand. that I didn't warn you about that did I it just kind of happened I know all right we're at item four which is approval of minutes and notice of waiving of reading of all resolutions and ordinances introduced and or adopted under this agenda and we have our minutes from December 11 of 2018 move to approve second motion to second any changes any further comments one abstention one abstention so we will have now let's do it this way. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Yes. Yeah. There, now we got it official. Perfect, thank you. All right. Well, the next item, wow. Really, we're just gonna just dive right into reception. <laughs> Son of a gun, okay, well, you know, there's nothing wrong. Eating food, it's still partly the holidays. Um, and uh, I, I mean, is this my opportunity to say some things about it? Okay, good, good. So we're um, going to recess in just a moment, but um, we want to thank Mark Landman, who was our mayor this past year for 2018. Uh, Mark has been mayor twice now, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it's, uh, it's an interesting position. It's not a position of power. Um, it's been made very clear by the four council members sitting to my side that it's not a position of power. So I understand that and I accept that. Thank you very much. Um, but I want to personally, Mark, I want to thank you for your leadership this past year. And um, it's been a pleasure working with you. I think we've been together in the council six years now. So thereabouts. I know it seems like 12, doesn't it? Sometimes. Sometimes. And. Um, I'd like to at least, before we have this recess, open it up to see if there's any other council comments you'd like to make, um, brief as they may want to be. I'll start with Council Member Moore. Um, I think it's been a pleasure working with uh, Council Member Landman, and I think he did a, a commendable job as mayor, and uh, hopefully the future mayors can uh, follow in those big shoes. <laughs> council Member Harvey. Yes, Mark, thank you for your leadership last year. It was a pleasure, um, and I think you did a really good job. And at times, I know that you felt a little constrained, and you were awesome at um, working through that. So I commend you on that and wish you all the best in your next four years. 
Vice Mayor Skillman. So I'll just echo what everybody else said. It, it was a real pleasure um, having you at the helm for this last year and um, keeping us on track and uh, just sort of maintaining order. And so really appreciate all of the hard work and extra effort that goes into that position. So thank you. Yes, I will look at you and acknowledge you and I'll allow you to speak. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, if I might. Yes, indeed. It's fun to be on the other side. <laughs> and thank you all very much. I'll be brief because I got to make some outgoing comments at our last meeting when we had our vote for our new mayor and new vice mayor. But I will just say I'm very grateful. Uh, this is something that is kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity. And how lucky am I? I've got to do it twice. So that's really remarkable. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without, number one, the support of the community. Thank you all very much for the faith you placed in me. And two, for the wonderful colleagues I have here to work with and the wonderful staff we have here at the city of Katahdi. Uh, you only look good, I learned in the fire department, is your crew makes you. And I'm very fortunate to have a good community and a good crew to work with. So thank you all very much. And with that, uh, Mark, we have this lovely plaque. And I think um, it would behoove us if a staff member has their iPhone ready that we'll go out front, take a quick picture, and then we will break and recess for, so for some treats. Then we'll come back for some more city business. Everybody's quieted down. This is awesome. We're going to go into now uh, item six, which is announcements. Meeting orientation for new attendees and viewers. In conformance with the Brown Act and the adopted city council rules, the meeting agenda includes items labeled as action items, where the city council will consider the item and citizens are afforded the opportunity to provide comments relevant to the item being discussed. The meeting agenda also includes a citizen's business item, which is the designated place on the agenda where citizens have the right to say whatever they wish. The city council may or may not choose to respond to comments as the government code allows. However, if the city council declines to respond, it should not be perceived as giving credence to or agreeing with any statements that the city council or its members believe are incorrect, misinformed, or purposefully biased. Second item, the City of Katahdi has special open office hours on Monday evenings from 5 to 7 p.m. by appointment in the Community Development Department at City Hall as part of its Katahdi Open for Business program. This program provides personalized assistance and information to developers, current Katahdi business owners, and those interested in starting a new business within the city. Third item is the Rona Park Katahdi Regional Library hosts events for all ages, including art exhibits, book clubs, and children's programs. All events are free and open to the public. For more information, call the library at 584-9121 or visit www.sonomalibrary.org. The fourth item is the Katahdi Historical Museum is open regularly the second Tuesday of each month from 5 to 7 p.m., Saturdays from 1 to 4 p.m., and by appointment. For more information, call 707-794-0305. The fifth item is citizens interested in receiving City of Katahdi community alerts via text or email are encouraged to sign up at nixel.com or texting your zip code 94931, those of you living in our city limits, to 888-777. And the final announcement is the city offers a variety of recreation programs for all ages. See details on the web at katahdicity.org. Now we are on item seven, which is presentations. And I'm gonna turn this over to the chief of police for an introduction of a new reserve police officer. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, council members. Anthony, come on up. So this is our newest reserve officer, Anthony Garber. And yes, we did 
swear at Anthony in the last uh, council meeting as well, but this is a different Anthony. Um, so Anthony he is a, a local person, um, growing up in Runner Park, and he's actually been a Katati resident as well. Um, he's a graduate of Rancho Katati High School, and like just about all of our staff, he's a graduate of the Santa Rosa JC Police Academy. Uh, he actually has previous law enforcement experience as a Lake County Deputy Sheriff. And Anthony is currently in the military reserves. He's a soldier in the Army National Guard in the capacity of a fire control specialist. And I bet you the mayor's gonna ask you about that, Anthony. Um, and Anthony begins his training tomorrow. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to give him the oath of office now. And then his wife, Lindsay, is gonna do the badge bidding. So Anthony, weight of the world is now off your shoulders. You already got a smile on your face. This is the easy part now. So um, we're going to grill you. We've got a series of questions. It's going to be about an hour and a half. Okay. So you okay with I that? Have my, I have my cheat sheet right here too. Excellent, right excellent. Um, we usually like to just ask some questions, but first I want to open it up to you. If you want to tell us a little bit more about, um, you know, your background, your history. We heard a little bit from the chief. If you've got people that you'd like to introduce, I see you've got a fan club <laughs> with you here. I've already met your grandmother, and she's great. And um, one last thing I want to say, I'm always concerned when we have a wife pinning the badge on an officer, because I never know how they're going to react to that and if the officer's going to get hurt. So this it worked out well tonight. Thank you. I did Appreciate the dishes, that. so we're good. Excellent. No, no extra poking on that one. <clears throat> Uh, well, uh, as you guys heard, my name is Anthony Garver. I grew up in Rona Park for 23, 24 years. Um, went to French Katati High School, graduated from there in 2012. I've always been kind of an uh, outgoing, out, outdoorsy kind of guy. Try to stay outdoors and uh, play as many sports as possible, keep myself out of trouble. Um, about a year ago, I decided to take the plunge to join the California National Guard as a fire control specialist. I spent a few months in Oklahoma over the summer, which was pretty hot, um, learning some skills and of the trade, and now I'm back and I'm really fortunate. And I'd like to thank all my, my family here and you know, two or three rows back and for the support that they gave me for this. Excellent, thank you. I won't push you any further than that, <laughs> I swear. Um, why don't we go ahead and uh, go around the table. We'll start with Councilmember Moore, if you have any questions or comments. Uh, Anthony, I just want to say welcome. Um, I, I do have a question. Um, you were a deputy in Lake County? Yes, sir. And you said Katati is much better than Lake County? <laughs> <laughs> May have mentioned it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, and uh, I think you're going to be joining a pretty good crew, and you've got a fantastic staff to work with, and uh, I hope you have a long and fruitful career, and that tenure contract will go quickly. Okay, perfect. Councilmember Harvey. Well, welcome, Anthony. I'm not going to go. <laughs> I'll give you a pass. I'll 
I'll keep my eyes and ears open though, and that I may works. have questions for you later, but welcome and thank you um, for joining our team in Katati. Thank you. Councilmember Landman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> well, Anthony, first of all, welcome. I think it's really great, particularly when we have somebody who's gone to high school in the community, <laughs> now protecting the community. And I argue that people who've gone to high school, they're the best people to make officers. <laughs> they actually know the community and they know a lot of our, how our folks work pretty well. So. Now, I know that the chief suggested that we leave this to the mayor, but since I get to ask questions before he does, I'm going to take advantage of this now that I'm over here and ask you, tell me a little more about being fire specialist. So the name is kind of confusing. A lot of people think it's uh, regarding uh, firefighting, mm -hmm. but I'm actually in the field of artillery. I am the, uh, I take in data, I put it in co into a computer coordinates, um, different kinds of rockets and cannons to use and I put it out to the actual guns themselves and then they shoot them, shoot them at uh, whoever is shooting at us. So you're good for pressure situations. Yeah, I'd like obviously to, I'd this like is to something so. you want to get right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> very good. Well, it sounds like that's worked very well. Welcome to Katani. Thank Glad you. To have you here. Vice Mayor Skillman. Well, I'll echo what everybody was saying. Welcome to Katani or welcome back to, to uh, where you grew up. So um, that's really fantastic that you, that you have that familiarity with the area and appreciate as well your military service so thank you for serving our community as well as the, the nation so um, really appreciate that my uh, my father served and other family members and so I know what a sacrifice it can be so thank you very appreciate much appreciate it thank you and um, we look forward to having a long fruitful career here in Katati thank you yeah, I'm not sure why the chief thought I would be interested in this uh, fire thing, especially when it's rockets and cannons. <laughs> I don't know if there's something you're thinking I do on the weekends in my backyard. I'm not quite sure. Um, but it's good to know that's what it's about, clearly. I uh, appreciate that. So um, we're not going to pressure you anymore. really appreciate it. Um, training starts tomorrow. Is that what I heard? So. You know, you're welcome to leave the council early to get enough bed time and you need to rest. Perfect. I get that, so that's entirely up to you. Um, thank you for being here, and we certainly wish you a long and happy career here in Katati. Thank you. Appreciate it, Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you. to see if they're going to start filtering out or not. <laughs> Which is fine if you do. I'm not going to hold that against you. You're free to go then, absolutely. It's a great reason. All right, okay, we're going to move on to item eight, which is our honorary mayor. And we have Zara Walton of Tech. Hi, Zara, come on up. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, uh, my name is Zara Walton, and I'm a senior at Technology High School this year, uh, which is currently located on Sonoma State's campus. Um, I'm excited to be honorary mayor tonight and to represent my school in our local government. Um, I've lived in Katati since I was two months old, so I've grown up here for almost all of my life and even went to elementary school at Thomas Page El Elementary. Um, I love our small town environment and the things that Katati has had to offer. Uh, I've always had passions for theater and dance, which I've been able to further in our town through local uh, community organizations. Um, and I've also had passions in soccer, which I've been able to further through my school. We actually won NCS Division Three championships this last fall. Uh, which is pretty exciting. Um, as for my future passions, uh, I really enjoy marine biology and conservation, which I hope to further when it, at college this fall where I study. I just finished all my college applications, so I'm unsure as to where I'm going, but I'm excited for the future. And I look forward to gaining skills that I can hopefully bring back and share with my community. Thank you. That's excellent. Thank you very much. And I'm going to apologize because I even asked you, how do you pronounce your name? Is it Zara, Zara or Zara? <laughs> and you clearly told me Zara like Sarah. I wrote it down and I said, <laughs> welcome Zara. You know, it's just, it's amazing. But there you go. First meeting, it's going downhill in a rapid hurry. Um, 
why don't we see if we have any questions from any of the council members? I'll start with Council Member Landman this time. All right, well, first of all, very pleased. I'm looking at the audience, I'm listening to the name, I'm listening to the school you went to. I'm guessing we have a West Side Honorary Mayor from West Side of Cataria. Mm -hmm. yes, right indeed. on. <laughs> Glad to see it. That's a good thing. Tell me a little more about the marine biology. How did that become something of interest to you? Uh, well, my grandparents live in Hawaii on the Big Island, so we've been visiting there since I was younger, and I've always liked the ocean and swimming and turtles and all that fun stuff. Um, and then my mom got me the opportunity to go out to the Bodega Marine Laboratory and volunteer with them and work with al baby elephant seals. And I just, I, I lo I've always loved animals, and I just really have a passion for saving them. So. Perfect. Yeah. Well, good to hear. It sounds very exciting. Very nice to meet you, Zara. You too. Microphone's off, sorry. Yeah. Vice Mayor Skillman. Well, nice to see you. I introduced myself with a quick break that we had there. So um, you did a really good job. It's a lot of pressure having all these people staring at your back and having <laughs> up here in this very formal setting. So very good job with your presentation. So thank you. Um, and I was interested with your, your theater and dance background just because I have sort of an artistic background um, myself. Did you get a chance to do any of the like audit classes at SSU or anything like that? When I haven't. Um, both my parents got have art degrees in art, uh, like dance and fine arts, so I've always had an appreciation for theater. And my aunt worked on cruise ships and did some Broadway stuff, so um, I've just, you know, I've, I love science. I go to a science technology STEM school, but uh, I also appreciate the arts, and so being able to do that through dance and theater uh, has been really nice. That's great. No, it's good to have that balance. Mm -hmm. So good for you. And I'm, it bodes well for your future, too, that you've got both sides of the brain going. So good job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Excellent. Councilmember Harvey. Well, welcome. Thank you for being our honorary mayor. Um, you may or may not know, but um, our recreation department has um, some children's um, theater productions that are put on. So at some point, if you have some spare time, I'm sure that that they can always use um, assistance like yours. I know you may go off to college, mm -hmm. but if you happen to be around, mm -hmm. that is something that the kids' productions are really wonderful, and, and it sounds like you like working with young animals, probably young kids too, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. but um, thank you for being our honorary mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Moore. Uh, Zara. <laughs> Thank you for, for being mayor. It's great. Uh, it's great to see a little hometown um, prodigy coming up and, and um, coming back to the community and being successful. So I wish you success in your uh, further endeavors. And uh, I'm not going to give you any homework because uh, <laughs> Mayor DeLasso will do that very well. <laughs> he likes to do that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, he does. <laughs> Speaking of him in the Watch third out. person. Um, first of all, so you're... Um, your interest in, it sounded like marine mammals, but I mean animals in general, but marine mammals. So I work at this little park, it's called Point Reyes National Seashore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've got about 1,500 elephant seals out there, mm -hmm. and they're dying for attention. Mm -hmm. So there's, um, we should probably talk offline, there's probably a lot of opportunities out there working with our scientists in counting, tagging. If you've, anybody here ever put a tag in an elephant seal's flipper. Okay, um, and if you haven't, if you haven't, it's quite the joy because you don't really want to make those big ones upset because they can move really quick. So, yeah, we'll we'll definitely connect on that. Um, okay, so the homework assignment it's it's pretty tough. Um, I like to always ask our honorary mayors at their first meeting because you're coming back in two weeks to talk to your friends and come up with some ideas, some over the years we've been able to implement, others we haven't, of you know what maybe is missing in the city for your age group. You know, Is there an activity you'd like to see? Is it something our recreation department could put on? So um, talk to your friends. We'd love to hear if there's ideas out there. And those go on a list, and we pass them out to staff and saying, what can we implement and what can't we implement? So. Um, before you leave, would you like to introduce anybody in the audience? Those people that you know, preferably. <laughs> sure, I've got my family here, my mom and my grandma and my father. Um, they're here with me today. Excellent, great.
great. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, you. It is a school night. It is. It is. A school night? it is a school night. And so with that in mind, I know you don't necessarily need to stay late. And thank you very much. We will see you in two weeks. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to item nine on our agenda, which is approval of final agenda. Do we have any changes? Thank you, Mayor. No proposed changes. Thank you very much. Now we'll move to item 10, which is citizens' business and public comment for consent calendar items. Any member of the public wishing to speak to the council on any item or items listed on the consent calendar or any matter or matters not listed on the agenda that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council may do so at this time. Pursuant to the Brown Act, the council is not allowed to consider issues or take action on any item not listed on the agenda during this period. Pursuant to city council policy 2017-02, comments of any member of the public are normally restricted to a total of three minutes in length per person for matters not on the agenda and a total of three minutes per person in length for any and all items on the consent calendar. The mayor may extend the time limit for a reasonable time where a disability accommodation has been requested. I have no speaker cards, but is there anybody who would like to? Yes, Ms. Alderman. Um, first, I'd like you to acknowledge that where there was a statement put um, for the George Barrick, um, despite I, have a, I did a, have a limited power of attorney to speak for him. Um, okay, I'd like to say thank you, Miss Walton. She lives across the street, but we hardly ever see each other. So <laughs> it's great to see you, uh, representative of our neighborhood. Um, the um, I wanted to talk about the lack of services. Um, my friend is homeless. She lives in Katati. Um, she is not. She's out there tonight in the rain. Um, they, you can even in the cold, she's, and you can't even open a storm shelter. You, you put, won't put any, the homeless on the agenda. This has been going on for three years. How long are you going to keep ignoring ever, that there's, Mr. Moore said there was one homeless person last, um, council meeting. There is one visible homeless person to the count. There are at least dozens of people who are um, have temporary shelter, are couch surfing. There's lots of students. Um, there's people that are temporarily. The, all that count does is count the obviously homeless. Yes, we don't have them roaming our streets, but we don't. Oh, but they are out there and you won't even acknowledge them after three years. When are you gonna put homeless on the agenda? I'm tired of, and George does it too, you don't ever address it. And that, here it is, my friend, once again, will be out in the, I, we can't take her in. We're half full. <laughs> you know, where, there are homeless and you're not dealing with it. And I'm tired also of your lack of caring about people. Mr. Moore, for six months now, has refused. He called me that explanation crazy on his city email. Can I get an apology after six months? Can I get even acknowledgement? No. You guys don't care about people. You have up here in your high horse or whatever, not high horse, but you think you're so important. You're not more important than I am. You, you should be the de doing decent things to de for decent per there for people that live in this city. You're not. Where's the senior services? Where's anything for adults in recreation? You are not doing your jobs. Thank you. Do not, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. And uh, as Ms. Alderman pointed out too, um, she had a letter, a three-page letter from Mr. Barrich. So we're going to turn this in to make it part of the official uh, minutes of this meeting tonight. 
Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Mr. Kirkman. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have two items I want to address this evening. First of all, I appreciate that we are hiring people from Roanoke Park to serve us. I very much appreciated the uh, representative from Tech High, local person. Um, Mayor Deloso, you asked her to survey her friends and find out what you could do to improve things for a selective group and essentially improve the city. I've asked you repeatedly to do what Roanoke Park does and survey everybody in Katahdi. Um, it would be easy for you to simply duplicate their survey or pick and choose what you think is reasonable. Uh, it's their third year of having a survey. You choose not to generate anything from the public except for a few workshops for selective things like cannabis. It would be nice to, with your water bill or simply with the newspaper, have an open survey where you might hear from some people other than every four years when you folks, some of you canvas and knock on doors. It would be better to have something that's a little bit more formal and reasonable. Uh, many people don't come to these meetings. Generally speaking, there are two or three citizens that address you. On the other matter, it has to do with the lighting situation. Very impressive park lighting. Uh, looks kind of like Las Vegas. Uh, certainly, there have been other attempts in the past. You had Christmas tree lights for a while. There's kind of fell by the wayside and fell out of the trees because they were in the trees. You do have the uh, snowflakes that a former head of Public Works purchased for you. They were, I believe, $25 a piece, and certainly they're worthwhile as they do I believe a little something for the downtown area to have snowflakes. Um, in regards to the park, unfortunately, many of the lights are on throughout the day. I don't know that we need lights on during the day. I don't know that the park is so crime ridden that uh, we need 24 hour lighting. Another matter was then Mayor Landman discussed the need for security and safety on bike paths and lighting that needed to be on all the time as opposed to say solar or on demand lighting. For your information, the lighting that is on intersections, usually under street lights, they are not on all the bike paths or simply where it adjoins the, uh, the sidewalk. Um, for the most part in McGinnis Circle, uh, they've been off for a month. So you might want to turn them on or have some system where they come on with a timer because they've been dead. Uh, the bus stop by the fire department, lights aren't on. Some people like to be seen at a bus stop. And there are certain other areas in the city that certainly need lights. There are some streets that have no street lights whatsoever. So if you want input, I'd be happy to give it to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Anyone else under public comment? All right. Seeing no one, we'll go ahead and close the public comment. Um, I don't know if staff has uh, any reactions to any of the comments that came in, but um, the lighting project that was being implemented in the downtown parks and some other locations, am I to believe that still is not 100% complete? There's still some other sections to be done? The um, not all the lighting's been activated yet. There, um, we require PG&E to make the connection, and um, apparently they've been backlogged. Um, so we're still waiting on them to actually make the connection on it. And the ones in the park are um, there's a testing period where they test the lights, so they're on um, continuously during the testing period, and then they'll go to photo cell. So based on night day, yeah, like every similar. like all the other lights, yeah. Right. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for that. Okay, we will now go to item 11, our consent calendar, and we have just one item under consent, and I'll be happy to accept a motion in a second unless there's a reason to pull it and to have a discussion. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Since there was no discussion to begin with, probably not. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, that passes 5-0. Thank you very much. And now we're at item 12, direction on future agenda items. Does anybody, I'll look to my right first, anybody have anything for any future items tonight? Nothing tonight? This way? Not tonight, Mr. Mayor. Nope. Okay. And we're now at item 13, public
public hearings. And the first item, the only item we have is consideration of joining the statewide community infrastructure program. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Um, so the statewide community infrastructure program um, referred to, because of all of acronyms, is uh, SKIP. And um, this is a program under the CSCDA, another fabulous acronym. Um, so CSCDA is the California Statewide Community Development Authority, which the city has been a member of since 1994. It's a um, joint powers authority um, across the state of California. And there's 389 cities as part of this, as well as 56 counties. And um, although the city was a member for, uh, to CSCDA, we um, had not initiated, um, we had not enrolled, I should say, in the SKIP program. And enrollment is what we're talking about tonight. It's through a resolution to enroll the city um, in the um, statewide community infrastructure program. This program was started by CSCDA in 2002. And um, it, it was really um, started to allow owners of property in the participating cities or counties um, an alternate um, mechanism to finance projects. And the, um, uh, the projects, I should say that the program is intended for both public infrastructure projects as well as impact fees. So when you have, um, for example, a private development, they can finance the, the cost or part of the cost of the impact fee, um, or they can finance the cost or part of the cost of some required public improvement they have to do um, to develop the property. And um, the, so kind of in a nutshell, um, Basically, what the CSCDA does through the SKIP program is um, there's applications around the state for, um, for enrolling projects in this program. And um, people apply, and then the jurisdictions can um, choose to approve the projects or not approve the projects. And then, assuming they're approved, then they go forward into um, an aggregated um, bond program. So um, a lot of these projects individually are too small to um, do a bond issuance on, because the bond issuances can be kind of expensive and they're typically reserved for more expensive projects. So what this program does is it kind of um, aggregates a bunch of small projects into what then would be a large project, an aggregate, um, to make it worth the bonding costs. And the bonds issued are tax exempt, so um, a better interest rate than you'd get um, through many other private funding or financing mechanisms. Um, CSCDA does the bond issuances about two or three times a year, so it's an ongoing process. I, I will say also attached um, to the staff report is um, there's a presentation about the SKIP program, um, which goes into some more detail. And then, um, <clears throat> like I'd mentioned, attached to the staff report is a resolution, and this is the resolution to just enroll the city in the SKIP program, and um, that, it, the SKIP program is not project specific, it just is a program that you enroll in, and then it allows projects, um, current projects or future projects, to ask to be, to, to enroll in that program and ask, you know, for, to finance their mitigation um, impact fees, or um, there are some other infrastructure costs. Attached, um, so anyway, attached to this um, staff report is a resolution um, to enroll in the program, and there's also, um, just as a, uh, it's just an FYI resolution. It's a form of the resolution of intention to be adopted by the CSCDA. So it's not a resolution the council adopts, but it's a, it's a resolution the CSCDA adopts. But just so you guys can see the, um, see the language of that resolution, so you're aware of what they're doing, or what they will, what they would do in the future. And then also there is an acquisition agreement um, attached as attached as Exhibit B to the resolution. And um, the acquisition agreement applies when the private party is doing public infrastructure. It doesn't apply um, in the case of financing impact fees. So um, the acquisition agreement, as you see in the action, is, is um, you would be a, a approving it, approving the form of that agreement. Um, so essentially when there's an infrastructure project that is bonded through this program, that's the um, agreement between the city and the developer, um, just with the project name and dates filled in. But that's basically the, the agreement. So um, the one thing I will say in terms of um, pro city process, 
the one thing that's a little bit uh, different, um, and, and this is just because this is a bond program, and so it operates like a bond program. It's governed by IRS tax rules since it's a tax-exempt bond. Um, in in a what I call normal situation, <clears throat> when we do developments, when there's a um, uh, when there's a building permit issued for someone to like say build a house, for example, there's impact fees that are assessed on the building permit, and so we collect it permit by permit. So um, uh, the first project that is um, requesting to be part of this is a is a project by the name of Kessing Ranch that you're all familiar with. So using that example, um, it's 47 units. So how that would work. Um, in the absence of a program like this, is every every uh, building permit that's issued as they go along, and it probably would be, would be a two to three year process for them to build out the entire subdivision. Um, we'd collect impact fees locally in our, you know, at the city level, um, with each unit that's issued, each building permit that's issued. With a program like this, because they issue the bonds, then the bonds um, are issued up front at the start of the project, and all that, all that. Um, bonded impact fee money would be available basically as soon as the bond is issued. So it would be, so from the city perspective, it would be all available up front. Um, and um, what it does mean though is that the bond money is not held by the city. The city has access to it, but it's held in an escrow account. And so when we need the money, we request the funds from the escrow account as opposed to holding it directly in our, in our account. So it's a little bit of a different process in that respect, but that's a typical bonding process as opposed to like, you know, kind of the normal um, impact fee collection process. Um, the one thing I will also just add is that um, because of IRS rules around tax exempt <coughs> bonds, they, um, they, uh, they want you to make, um, you know, a, a good faith effort to, um, to expend the funds within three years. The, the bond funds as opposed to um, what otherwise would be the state law around mitigation fees, which um, has a little bit of a longer window for expenditure. So I um, just want to point that out. And um, I guess with that, I'll just, um, I'll stop there and open it up if you guys have any questions on anything in particular. Thanks. Okay, great, thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Councilmember Harvey. Um, could you uh, talk to me a little bit about um, why the affordable units are excluded? I notice in the discussion in here it says that those units are excluded. I mean, they still have infrastructure, so I'm a little confused by that. Yeah, they do. Um, so the the assessment district, so the, to, to issue the bonds, they have to create an assessment district. Um, and the discussion, at least in this particular project, was that um, the affordable units would be excluded from the assessment district because of the, um, just the financing complexities with affordable, um, affordable housing and adding, um, you know, shifting the, shifting the cost, you know, the, the cost of, the, of these fees from the construction, from the construction front end cost to a property based assessment, um, the the feeling was is that it would be another property assessment that would be harder to qualify and for people in the lower income units to manage. So that what that for that reason they proposed to put it on the market rate units only and um, exclude the, the the low income ones. So does that mean that those impact fees will be paid up front when the permits are issued for those units? Um, that's correct. Okay. And my second question is, um, you, you pointed out uh, one of the, the things for developers is that it, it allows a better rate because um, typically the bonds are lower than what uh, a resident would get on a mortgage rate. So my question is, is most people going out buying buying a home, you know, sort of have a general expectation, at least in California, that their tax rate is going to be, you know, 1% and then any any additions. But generally speaking, this is a big add-on when you look at the examples that were in there. So how are people that are looking to purchase these houses, how are they really kind of informed up front so that they know 
before they all of a sudden get this huge tax bill that they weren't anticipating. Right. So um, I should also point out, I forgot to mention in my staff report, that we do, um, just as a housekeeping thing, we do have um, a representative from the SKIP program here tonight, Luke um, Brewer, who is available to answer any more detailed questions. But um, And he can, maybe you can come up and help me on this one. But my understanding is, is in the, um, is in the purchase documents that the property owner receives that it discloses all of these things in the title report as well? That's a little late. So when they're, <laughs> when they're marketing the homes generally, they have to uh, include it in any, any sort of like papers they give to them with respect to the, the pricing of the home. It has to basically refer to any additional taxes beyond the 1% and beyond the, the, the taxes of the school district, et cetera, any ad valorem taxes. So those are uh, a requirement that those um, that's a statewide requirement Denoted. that those are disclosed. Disclosed. Uh, yeah, very Prior blatantly. To yeah, so okay. Melarus has a is very popular down in Riverside and this Southern California. It's not as popular up north. They had a very they had a big problem with that, and so they, they put laws in place that were for home buyers to really understand what they were getting themselves into. Okay. So and we we've, we've done some interesting analyses that show were they to pass the um, costs of these impact fees onto the home buyers in the price of the home rather than an assessment, um, it can be more beneficial in some situations to have it pass on as an assessment because there's no upfront, you have to put down the down payment sort of on a house, it's, it's a little bit cheaper and it can make homes more affordable from a sort of upfront standpoint. Thank you for that. Those were my questions. All right, Councilmember Moore, any questions for staff? Thank you, Mayor. Also, I do have a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> The, there's nothing to preclude the homeowner from prepaying or paying these assessments off early if they so desire, is there? Nope. Yeah, they can they can call bonds at any time. So if they were a home buyer was to buy the home, you know, right after they finished building it, and if they wanted to include in their mortgage the amount to, to pay it off, they could do that themselves. Okay. And they can pay it off at any time. There's a small premium in the first 10 years, but after that it's um, totally able to be prepaid. It's a 2% Pay it off early. Declining down to one than one hundred percent. So there is a fee if they pay it early because then the bonds don't necessarily hit maturity or correct. Okay. Um, and then the other question I had was on the uh, impact fees. With the normal impact fees, what is the time period that we have to expend those? Um, you know, yeah, it's ten years. And now we're going to a three-year window. Um, we have to on these particular projects. Um, so it's it's my understanding it's a good faith effort, but I think you know the bulk of it is um, projects based on the window of time they give you to expend these funds. We already have um, for the bulk of the impact fees in this particular case, we have um, projects already. We have earmarked those already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and technically, from 60 days prior to the application. Any money that has been spent by the city out of funds for those impact fees can be counted against the money that is bonded for. So you can look look back. It doesn't have to be from the day that the that we close the bonds and the funds are are made available. It can be 60 days. So the, the application was received in September. So they can look back as far as you know May, July, June, July to look at expenditures the city has made. In addition to projects that are earmarked. So, for I mean, for example, we have um, the bulk of the impact fees in this case are sewer impact fees, the largest dollar amount of them, and um, we have the P1 sewer under construction right now, and that's like eligible, right, as a as a project that we could pay ourselves partially back for. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right, I'll look this way. Council Member Landman, any questions? One question. Thank you, Mr. Brewer. Um, so I'm looking at page two of my packet here. You don't need to all look at it, but it's just basically talking about some of the advantages, clearly for the developer, the current property owner, and that's logical. We can see that, but that's helpful. Um, and it mentions for home buyers that paying for the cost of public infrastructure through a special assessment is superior than having those costs rolled into the cost of their home, because ultimately this is a cost that's passed on to the people that purchase these homes, uh, one way or the other, whether it's up front or it's through, through bonding. But it mentions the last... Uh, 
sentences. Moreover, because the special assignment financing is at tax except rates, it is typically comes to lower costs than mortgage rates. I'm assessing, I'm guessing the answer to my question is going to be very small, but in a small development like this, where we're going to have maybe 42, 43 units that will be covered under this, what sort of cost savings might we expect to be found from this? Can you take even a rough guess at that, Mr. Brewer? From an interest rate perspective? Right. Talking about the savings. Since these are tax exempt, it typically should come, the financing should come at a slightly lower cost than mortgage rates. And I'm curious if there's some built, baked in savings here, if we can put a rough idea what it is. I'm imagining it's pretty negligible, but I wanted to hear somebody new more tell me that. So it's a little bit tricky because part of the savings are actually, so when developers get loans, they're relatively expensive. They're raw land loans, you know, they're construction loans, they're really probably in the 8% range. And then obviously mortgages are much lower because they're backed by an actual asset. They have security. And so developers generally have to borrow money in the beginning of projects, and especially in small projects, they have to borrow money just to pay these fees when they pull them, because they can't sell a home and get the profit from that until after they've paid the fees. So they take, you know, however much time their loan is on that, those fees, and they put that interest on the home as well. So that's the beginning aspect of it. And then from there you have, I mean, our rates have been between 4% and 4 and 3 quarters over the, you know, time of the year, and depending on where the markets currently are. And so we've seen, and mortgage rates have also been extremely low for the past, you know, 8, 9 years now. Don't say that out loud, you'll jinx it. But yeah, we generally see, and we've done different analyses, and we can sort of circle back and provide you with some one of those side-by-sides, and the developer's consultant has generally put those together for the developer so that they can sort of work on that when they're doing the marketing, so they can sort of point to that. And it's a lot of the times it's negligible, it's, you know, $100 a year or so, but it adds up, and especially when you're talking about. Well, I just wanted to check. Obviously, if it's something that's almost, obviously, it's in the green side of the slate. I like that better for the public than going the other direction. That would be pretty unacceptable. But I was just curious, if it was large, I was going to ask you, well, what's the methodology to make sure that this small savings is truly passed on to the consumer? Because, I mean, are you counting on just the marketplace to do that? So when we issue the bonds, we generally tend to issue them at a premium, which is a positive, because it means that, so the interest rate is higher, but the actual amount borrowed is lower sometimes in certain situations. And so if they get the actual principal amount of the assessment, it's much lower than it would be if market rates were higher. So that's an aspect of tax-exempt financing that taxable financing doesn't have. So we issue 5% coupon bonds at a 4% rate. And so there's bond, the bondholders will buy at a much higher price, so it lowers the total amount we need to borrow. And so that's sort of one of the ways that it's passed on. The actual assessment amount annually, it would be lower than would it be if it would have been, you know, I was looking more for what's the mechanism that actually would slightly wind down to a small degree that market price for the finished unit. Because that's obviously, that's where this is set. You would guess that the marketplace, given that the developer saves some money, they can be slightly more competitive or perhaps shaving a bit off. And I just wanted to see if there's anything beyond that in there to protect the consumer. So when land price, California has a, the real issue isn't, there's construction costs, but land value, the cost of land has gone up a lot. And so a lot of developers don't want to build, or if they do build, they want to build, you know, the biggest, fanciest homes because it's where that's the way they can make the most money. And so I think what consumers get with these kinds of programs is it helps home builders keep the costs of homes where they are while land values are going up dramatically. Because it means that they don't have to raise the price of the home to sort of fall out in the same place. So that's the mechanism. And that obviously, once again, sounds like it's on the developer side, but it ends up also being on the home buyer side because they don't have to pay more for the home just because the land that's underneath of it has gone up significantly in value. So basically it just helps the chances for the opportunity for working class housing to be available that might fall under the penciling out range. Very good. Thank you for that answer. All right. Thank you, Council Member. And Vice Mayor Skillman, any questions? I don't have any questions. Okay. I don't, I think this has been answered by our city manager, but I'm going to ask it again. So when you were talking about 
um, the spending of the bonded impact fees, and you said there's a, about a three-year, you use that term good faith effort, which to me from a legal standpoint, I don't know what that means. And how do you interpret that? So I'm curious within that same definition, is it if the money is obligated or if the money is expended? And if they're looking at a difference, because those are two radically different things. You can obligate you know, in the form of an agreement or a contract or a purchase request, but you still haven't expended the dollars. So to me, that's kind of, that's kind of a good faith effort, but I'm not sure. Uh, and, and if that wasn't, you know, I, I couldn't find that definition anywhere in there. If and I would like to attempt to that directly because we just we're just dealing with this with another Great. another city. They were just asking the same question: is what it, what do I have to certify to? And it's it's not really a, a very strong certification that we require. With so at the every closing, there's a tax certificate that is signed by the city uh, for any funds in it, and it says that they reasonably expect. It's not a good. It's not good faith. It's reasonably expect to spend the money in three years. And what we we believe, and then there's another sentence that says, and have done the due diligence behind that that says they can reasonably expect three years. So, a lot of the times for cities that just means capital improvement plans mm -hmm. that say we have these projects laid out that are sewer or these that are water or streets or lighting or whatever we're funding, uh, and it says that they reasonably expect based on those plans to spend that money in that time. Uh, and then the other aspect of the due diligence is we do the due diligence with the city at the time of financing. We ask every single time, do you have projects? And if you don't, we don't fund it. That's the way that it goes. We're not, we don't force the funding on people. We, we really only finance what we can do tax exempt. That's, that's the way the program works. Okay. That, that just makes it a little bit more solid. And that's kind of what I was curious about. So I, I'm satisfied with that response unless you have yeah. more to add. I, I was just going to reiterate that it's obviously important that we have um, a, an adopted and current, you know, um, capital improvement program, CMP. which, you know, I know we're in the process of updating it right now. So right. it's important that we have a, you know, a, um, a current capital improvement program to be able to make that uh, certification of reasonable right. expectation of expenditure. Okay. No, that's great. All right. Well, thank you. We may have you come back up. I'm going to go ahead and open this up for public comment at this point in time. If anybody has any comments related to this topic, nobody. All right, then. I will close the public comment and bring this back to council for some direction. If there's no further comment, I'd be happy to move adoption of the attached resolution authorizing the city to participate in the statewide community infrastructure program, SKIP, and approving the form of the acquisition agreement attached to the resolution is Exhibit B. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, show that's a 5-0 vote in favor. Thank you very much. We will now move to item 14 of our regular agenda, which is the measure, measure, whew, measure G annual report for fiscal year 2017 and 2018. I'll turn that over to the city manager. Yeah, thank you, mayor, members of the council. Uh, so um, in, uh, well, of course, the item before you is the Measure G annual report for fiscal year 17-18, as well as the review letter by the Measure G Citizens Oversight Committee, which met on December 13th of last year and um, is attached to the packet. So um, just sort of in summary, the um, annual report on Measure G for the prior fiscal year, it, um, it continues to support essential services, police, parks, streets, and recreation services. Um, some highlights from last year include, um, uh, as you know, our consolidation um, or absorption, I would say, of SSU's dispatch. So we're the primary um, public safety answering point for Sonoma State University as well, which is a opportunity that would not have presented itself had Measure G not been in existence and um, we're able to preserve our local police department. We also added um, a second recreation staff person as a rec coordinator. We, um, we continue to work on the citywide lighting project and um, we started the start of construction there but most of the construction spilled into this current fiscal year right now. And um, we did construct the Cater sidewalk um, project, so it allowed us to um, acquire the CDBG grant, 
to do the sidewalk here, um, which was the sidewalk gap on um, East School Street. It's the, it was the sidewalk gap that was remaining. And so now we have continuous sidewalk all the way down East School to the Civic Center area and, um, and leverage that CDBG money. We um, completed the remodel of the engineering and community development space for better workflow and um, customer service during this fiscal year. Uh, we continued the ongoing vehicle replacement um, for, um, we cycled out an old administrative vehicle and um, a police patrol car. Um, and the focus, aside from the capital projects already mentioned, was, um, was winding down the large grant-driven projects from the prior fiscal year. So this is like the downtown paving project, as well as um, the sidewalks and um, uh, crosswalks and streetlights and trees that you see in the Northern Gateway area. So we're winding down those large grant-driven projects and um, moving into the next phase of work, which, um, uh, which was completing the design for the L-section paving that went into construction shortly after the end of the fiscal year, which you all saw, as well as um, the East Katati paving project, which is um, another um, federal grant-driven project with um, Measure G matching funds. And so that one, um, I mean, that's in the adopted budget, but that project physically is located east of the railroad tracks. So basically the railroad tracks to the city limits in front of Sunflower Park and Windmill Farms. And so you should be seeing that move into construction, hopefully, in the near future. And um, finally, uh, finishing up the West School Street sidewalk, the phase of work, um, just continuing the, the off-street sidewalk for, um, for children to be able to walk on the west side to Thomas Page School. And um, I'll just wrap up by saying that, as you all know, Measure G allows for 100% of this revenue to stay local, unlike um, the other sources of revenue that the city has. And it allows for all of these programs and infrastructure improvements that um, not only we've seen this year, but in prior years and in the current year. So um, um, the, as I mentioned earlier, the, over, the letter from the oversight um, committees attached and they found the expenditures consistent with Measure G and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you. Um, good report. I mean, it shows uh, the, at least conceptually, what we had discussed way back when, how those dollars could be spent. That's where exactly where those funds are going. So that's very promising. Any questions for staff? Councilmember Moore. Um, no, I think it's great. Um, you were talking about the West School Street sidewalk improvement for the children. I guess seniors could use that as well? Uh, yes. Thank you. That was a clarification. Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, Councilmember Harvey, any? No. Vice Mayor Skillman, any questions? No. Councilmember Landman, no. Okay. I'm going to open this up for public comment. Ms. Alderman, please. Um, during the celebration for the mayor, um, I was joking with a lot of people around here that I'm the real history historian in Katati. Peru may be the whatever, but <laughs> the official one, but I know what really happens. Measure G report was a joke. This is what happens every year. The, you publish it three days before, uh, sometimes up to 24 hours, but 24 hours to 72 hours before. You don't advertise it anywhere. Nobody shows up other than the citizens that are appointed. You chose your citizens. You appoint people that you only know will do it. Then Damien sits there for 45, 50 minutes giving a report on what it is. Then they don't discuss it. Then they approve the letter. It has no oversight of Measure G is a joke. You want to know it could be those funds can be used for can, you can say you used them for toilet paper. It's a general tax. Um, you want to know where the money really went? The bump from Measure A to Measure G was a half a cent. It brings in extra million dollars a month uh, a year. What has the salaries gone up according to Transparent California in the last three years? It's gone up a million dollars. 
That's where Measure D money is going. It's going in the staff's pockets and for their pensions. You don't mention any time that Damien's getting huge amounts of money. You never curtail the city. And you make Measure D responsible for everything. It is not. You have not kept up with the ballot measure. When people, you don't have citizens in the audience discussing it because you hide the dam when the meeting is. I mean, you have mosquito abatement openings, but you can't put the citizens, what we pay a half cent more sales tax a year. You can't put that on the headlines. I am just really disgusted at, this has been going on for four years. I was the only one who went to one of these, to my knowledge. I'm the only citizen. So you guys really need to tell the truth and keep this, stop this crap. All right, thank you for your comments. Anyone else on this item? I see no one. I'll go ahead and close the public comment. We will see certainly what we can do in better outreach efforts. And I know speaking of your comment of money in staff's pockets, you know, we did say early on that we would increase our police department and our maintenance persons, maintenance division. And I do know through Measure G, we've hired two officers. We've hired a dispatch person and an additional, at least one additional maintenance employee. So with that, let me go back here. I believe that this was a receive and file. And we have received and filed. Unless there's any further comments or questions from council members? Council member Lane. I did want to thank staff for the thoughtfulness and thoroughness of the report. You know, it is true. Measure G doesn't do every single thing. But it is also true it does a lot. And it's very clear in reading and support exactly what it does. And I think thankfully that's exactly the type of thing you want to give to a committee that meets, you know, on an annual basis. That's exactly what they needed. In terms of my friends on there, I would mention, I'm actually going to have to ask. James O'Rourke is my appointment, correct? I've never met the man. I remember when it came up, there were a few different names. I looked at backgrounds and that's who I picked. So, and it looks like from what I've seen, they're doing good work. So my thanks to them too for taking the time and commitment to actually be helpful in running this city. That's a great thing. We appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Yes, Council Member Harvey. Yeah, I appreciate you mentioning the fact that with Measure G, we were able to add police officers and maintenance workers. We got a recreation department back. I think it's also important to acknowledge and remind people, it's in the report, but we need to remind folks that we came from a place where we had a 28% reduction in staff and we've been able to bring, you know, bring those numbers back. We had reduced services. We had, you know, the office closed all the time. We were barely, you know, getting by. We had voluntary staff salary reductions of 14%. I mean, those were temporary reductions that we would have had to ultimately probably reduce staff even more to cover those. So it's one thing to look at, you know, bottom line numbers and say the salaries have gone up by a million dollars. Well, in fact, salaries are people and people are salaries. So of course the salary numbers will go up if you add people. So it's all relative. We have added folks and we have, you know, brought back the services. So I think Measure G, the people of the community decided that they wanted these services and they wanted to keep these services. So I think that the money is being well spent, kept in our community. All right. Thank you very much for those comments. Appreciate it. We're going to now move to item 15, which is the city manager's report. Thank you, mayor, members of the council. So I'll start off since we're just talking about police. I'll start off with that for this new year. We just start, we have a new, we had a shift change in the police department. So this week is a new shift. 
where they all, um, they all take new time slots. And we started um, our new traffic officer, um, Officer Ranky. He's our new traffic officer. And um, he is starting in the patrol car um, during the winter. Um, and we're going to get him into some uh, motorcycle school here shortly. So hopefully he will be on the motorcycle soon. But um, So he's out there now. And um, rain or shine. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to imply that he's in the car because it's winter time. It's just he needs traffic. He needs the motor school to be able to ride the motorcycle. That's, that that was what that is. So um, so he's going to be out there um, this week and from here on out, keeping our streets safer. So that's a good thing. And um, our uh, canine officer, Officer Deaton, is now a corporal, and um, he's still patrolling with Remo, his canine dog so um, if you see him out there you might have a couple stripes on his sleeve that he didn't have before so I can tell him congratulations if you happen to see him and um, here's a this is a first for the Katati Police Department one of our officers um, is Officer Wardell and I don't know if any of you have looked at the um, police department's Facebook page but they had a mustache contest um, at the end of the year and um, so there's one of them uh, Officer Wardell is one of them that got a lot of likes on his mustache <clears throat> he has a um, kind of strawberry colored mustache. He's blonde, strawberry blonde, right? So he's um, continuing to continuing to uh, grow that out. Well, that um, that officer is um, our first ever recruit training officer at the Santa Rosa JC Police Academy. So um, he is representing Katati well up there and helping to train the next um, next crop of police officers for this county. So that was it's very impressive. And he's also the officer, by the way, the last year that um, that won the MAD award for DUI um, stops and getting people off the road that are driving intoxicated. So he's doing a lot of great work. And then um, just to catch up on some stuff from the holiday, we had our successful toy drive and delivery that we do with the um, Rotary Club as well as Rancho Adobe Fire. And um, on December 22nd, we were delivering toys in the patrol cars and fire trucks to families in Katati, Runner Park, and Pengrove. Um, so another, this is the continuation of that annual event, and um, a lot of lucky kids got presents that day. And then at, um, <clears throat> we had a couple um, cocoa, so you know we have coffee with a cop, right? But not, not everyone is suited for caffeine, um, especially people that are young, like especially like my children. Caffeine's not a good idea. Um, <laughs> so we also have a program for them that we started in this winter time. Um, we had Coco with the cop, and we um, we were out there at Thomas Page Academy, and um, met children. We have a bunch of programs out there where we're meeting with um, the police and the teachers and the principal, and um, do, running various things. But this um, particular thing was kind of a meet and greet, kind of like the coffee with the cop, but with kids. And we also had Coco with Santa um, next station, next door at the police station. Um, the day before, we had our breakfast with Santa event, and. Um, the Santa mysteriously resembled our, one of our police sergeants who read Cops Christmas to the kids. So, it might not have been the real Santa. But don't worry. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was a, that was another fun event. And then finally, um, at Thomas Page Academy, we delivered shoes for all the children there um, in partnership with New Hope Church on East Katati Avenue. They um, had gotten a grant through a, um, a shoe company, and <clears throat> they had asked our... Um, our assistance in that, so um, our police department par partnered with them and did all the uh, measuring of all their feet earlier in the um, November, I think is when it was, or maybe early December. And then they um, delivered shoes to everyone right before Christmas there. So that was great. Uh, on construction updates, um, night work is continuing on the sewer main on Highway 116, and it's currently, as you see by the plating in the, re in the highway out there, that's between the northbound off-ramp and Orwood Highway at this time. And it's currently expected this will be complete in February, um, weather permitting. When it rains, they don't do any work. So it's going to be, with the, with the forecasted weather in the next week or so, it's going to be kind of slow out there. But um, they continue when they can to do the night work just to stay out of people's way during the daytime when it's busy. And then um, the lighting project, as we already talked about that, but we're continuing um, to wait on pg &E to activate some other lights. And um, hopefully that will wrap up soon. And then on the recreation front, on Saturday, December 13th, we hosted our third um, sold-out Breakfast with Santa event. 
And guests had a great time visiting Santa, having a pancake breakfast and making crafts in a full in a fully decorated gingerbread house classroom. We had a classroom that was all decked out like a gingerbread house. It was pretty cool. And the two, we had two um, sessions. We had two breakfast sessions, and we had 193 registered participants. And that doesn't include children who don't count as registered participants, like under the two-year-olds and lower. So we had a lot of babies too. It was it was very busy. It was super fun, and it's actually one of the one of my daughter's favorite events. She likes to hand out cocoa to kids and make it extra chocolatey. I think I don't know. <laughs> So um, we expect that to continue and evolve next year, and we're working on that. During the past two weeks, while schools were on break, um, this is after Christmas, New Year's time frame, when people have to go back to work because Christmas is over, and um, uh, their, but their kids' school isn't back in session yet. We hosted a Camp Katahdi winter break camp, and we had 17 participants in the first week and 26 in the second week. And the campers got to spend time making um, <laughs> making friends creating crafts and playing outside. And we spent one day at La Plaza Park and another at Veranda Folletti where the campers got to learn about the animals on the property. Thank you, Dustin. And um, uh, visit a seven day old baby sheep and play games. It was a great two weeks of camp and we look forward to hosting again um, during the spring break camp in March. And um, I will just, I've said this before, but also I'll just um, say it again. The Redwood Empire Food Bank is offering senior food basket at the Charles Street Village um, property on Charles Street, of course, to anyone 60 and up on the second Wednesday of each month from 9 to 10 a.m. So that, that means the next one is tomorrow morning. And you don't need to be a resident of Charles Street Village to receive food. You just need an ID to verify your age. And then on Saturday, February 16th, we'll be having our second annual Sweetheart's Fairy Tale Dance for parents and their little princesses and princes. Um, children and families will enjoy a fancy evening of dancing, crafts, and refreshments. And so all these things you can register for um, on the website or over the phone, or you can just um, call Ashley Wilson at 665-4222 or awilsonatkatahdicity.org for information or um, questions. And, of course, follow the city's Facebook page for announcements on, on events and, and that sort of thing. And then um, uh, last but not least, after what seemed to be a exceedingly long report, so I apologize for that. But um, I did want to mention that um, I'm sad to say that um, that Vicky will be departing from us. She'll be departing the city. And um, I just wanted to thank her personally for her level of professionalism and um, dedication that she's brought to the Community Development Department. And um, I will say, you know, having worked with her on a day-to-day -day basis, that she is a um, tireless advocate for the community's vision of Katahdi. And, um, you know, I think it's a pretty regular occurrence, especially, especially in community development, where someone has some fabulous idea that would be totally contrary to what the community would want. And, um, and Vicki has um, been the gatekeeper to, to make sure that the projects that, that fit for the community you know, that meet the, the general plan, the specific plan, are, um, are, are um, in, you know, that they're, that they're brought through the process in an efficient, professional way. And then, you know, and the ones that have maybe different ideas are um, uh, explained, you know, sometimes numerous times as to how they can modify things to, you know, working with them to try to make it, you know, fit the community's vision. And, Anyway, I, I just, um, I just, well, I guess I'll conclude by saying that I'll miss her, um, I'll miss her greatly. But I wish her the best of luck in her, in her future endeavors. <laughs> anyway, thank you, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Are we allowed to say something to make her cry? <laughs> I'm just curious. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, good. So, uh, any council members? I'll start with Councilmember Landman. Any comments? <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to try to make you cry, but I do want to kind of tag on to what Damien said, you know, walking this year. Got to talk to a lot of people who have lived here a long time, and a lot of people have just moved here. And one of the uniform things I heard is how much they like the town. They like the unique little neighborhoods, um, the way they're laid out, the porches, uh, everything about that. And you've essentially been the guide and the leading light to make sure that happens. Not always an easy job sometimes, saying no to people, interests that don't want to be said no to, 
But the proof is in the result. And I think you've been a huge success here for us because Katani is doing very well. It looks very well. It's a very desirable place to live. And that's largely a result of the work you've put on here. So we're very grateful for that. Uh, I will say that working with you, I've found you've always displayed a very deep knowledge, sound judgment, uh, personally a willingness to go the extra mile for constituents, even just recently. Um, when somebody in L section needed some help with an issue, you went beyond what we had. You worked to find a new way to help that neighborhood with the, something that had been a thorn on their side for years, and you made that progress. We were just walking out there the other day and saw a comparatively huge improvement. There may be room to go, but, but that was all you. Uh, and I remember how pleased I was to have working with somebody that was that great to work with and do something like that. And personally, I will miss you very much. I will miss your... You may not see this at council meetings, but I do regularly. Your absolutely effervescent sense of humor. And, and the one thing I'll probably be safer at council meetings, because as we discussed earlier, we're the only two... I cannot look you in the eyes during a meeting and vice versa, because we'll both start laughing and get in trouble. So uh, I will miss having to be careful of that. I'm so happy we have a place that lets people develop, shine, and move on to do even bigger and better things, and I wish you success in doing that. And thank you for your time with us, Vicki. Wow, that's like, that was really good. I, I know, do you, wanna, do you wanna follow that? I wanna follow, okay. Really? I'll try. Um, no, I, I will definitely miss um, seeing you at council meetings and then the halls and me talking with you and getting updates about the, the, the horses, the, four, the, furry, the furry children. Um, and uh, I, I cannot, because I'm having a senior moment at my youthful age, <coughs> um, I can't remember if I brought this up at the last meeting, but I got um, a note um, end of November that I got from somebody who they now live in Alaska, but they came back to visit with his, his wife and he commented, and I'll share this with you because I know that you're a big part of this, but also with my fellow council members, they said that they were so pleased to see um, the old school still being put to use and um, <clears throat> all the new businesses that were here in town. and. They said that, you know, even though they live far away, Katati has been and will always be my home. Thank you for sustaining such a vibrant community, and we look forward to visiting again. So um, even folks who no longer live here can come back and appreciate that we still maintain that small town charm that so many people find to be their number one priority. And um, just wanted to share that note with you because I think you've been a large part of that during your tenure here with Katati. And, and I wish you good luck with your future endeavors. Thank you very much, Vice Mayor. Councilmember Moore, any words? Certainly. Um, <laughs> I haven't even said anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you've been a tremendous asset to the community. Um, coming in at a time where it was not easy with the economic downturn and the recession that we experienced, and have stayed true to the vision of the general plan and specific plans, as Mark has indicated. Um, you've always carried the task with um, great integrity and with a good sense of humor and realizing that you have to have a, a thick skin in a position like you're at, especially dealing with people like council members like us. Um, and. And I think you've done admirably, and I and I think that our loss is going to be your future's gain. So, thank you so much for uh, serving, Councilmember Hart. Vicky, Vicky, Vicky. Well, I too will miss you. As was alluded to um, in Damian and Mark's comments, you really did grasp what the community wanted. I can remember all of the sessions um, around the general plan update. I mean, some of those were pretty crazy and you listened to what people had to say and you developed a plan um, to implement those ideas and thoughts. Um, speaking of crazy council members, I, I more than once um, had have brought in um, something someone wanted to do or something someone needed or something I'd seen and you um, always found a way to either set me straight or to help make, make the situation um, different. Um, I agree you have a great sense of humor and, and a very professional um, with what you do. You 
open the Katadi open for business program. We didn't have that. A lot of people appreciated that. You um, visited businesses to see what you could help with the businesses. Um, and I agree with uh, Council Member Moore that um, your um, success in your new uh, endeavor uh, is really our loss and their um, asset. And I will miss you, miss, you know, occasionally getting together with you at, at different events and learning about your horses and, and other things. But um, I hope you'll come back and visit us and I hope to see you um, around town. But good luck and we will definitely miss you. Oh, my turn. I haven't, oh no, I can, I can make her cry oh, if, I, if, I, if I really wanted to. Um, actually, Council Member Harvey kind of stole my thunder because I too was going to say Vicky, Vicky, Vicky. So I'm going to put that sentence past me now and move on to my other thoughts. Um, and it really, I mean, it really is your professionalism that you brought, not just to City Hall, but certainly to the Community Development Department. And it's got to be a really tough thing when a developer or somebody comes in with, you know, a, a really interesting sounding idea but that idea really doesn't go with either the policy or direction that's been set by current or, or past councils. And so that's gotta be a really difficult thing. And, and I know we've talked about that in the past, but um, you know, you've had a, a very strong hand um, in developing what this city looks like now and what it's going to look like in the future. So um, as people have said, you know, don't, don't forget to come back and look at your handiwork because sometimes it does take time for things like that to develop out. So, um, yes, we will all miss you. We wish you the best of luck. And um, if there's still some more cookies, you're welcome to have a cookie right, if you'd like. So, and I'm not gonna. I'm not putting you on the spot since this was the city manager's report to say anything. So we will um, just thank you and we'll move on for now. All right. I, I would just. There's, there's they, more. They I knew it. I knew I couldn't get her. I couldn't. My mom would would be horrified if she, if sure. I didn't say thank you for all those kind words. So I do want to say thank you to that. And I am going to cry, and I apologize for that lack of professionalism, but it really has been a privilege to serve you all in the planning commission and the design review, and especially this group here that we um, work so hard together every day. It's been my privilege to do that. Thank you. Thank you again. The pressure's now on Damien. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> All right. Um, item 17 is... No. Item 16. I almost skipped over that. Sorry. City Council Member Reports. Let's go to my right. We'll start with Council Member Moore. I don't know if I like this seat over here. <laughs> it moves around. It's all right. The, um, in, in looking at the departure of our community development director and the relationship that she had with the, with the uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, I just referenced that tonight at our meeting, and uh, we had the big gasp of, oh, no. And so um, they were sad to see you go because of the relationship and the, and the outreach that you had done with the Chamber and through the city. Um, so they're going to miss you greatly as well. I'm sure they may come by and say something prior to your leaving. Um, other than that, there was a couple of things that were coming up with the um, Chamber of Commerce. Um, on the 18th, we've got the uh, Farmsters Grand Opening. That, that'll be uh, coordinated there. Um, and of course, we have the awards dinner, the annual awards dinner coming up on, on February 2nd. Um, and then there's some luncheon meeting that I think might behoove all of us um, on February 12th here in the uh, community room. And the speaker is going to be Chester Santos, and he gives um, information and um, guidelines on memory. And I thought, oh, we can all use that. Um, so those are a couple of the few things that are coming up with the Chamber of Commerce, and um, they've got their new board, they're looking for new board members this year, and so they had a couple of people that were participating in the meeting. I, I won't go into
to whether or not um, they want to be divulged yet because they haven't determined if they want to accept the position on the board, but I think they would be both be a terrific asset to the board. Um, and then we have our remit annual two-day meeting coming up in Windsor on the 24th and the 25th. Yeah, so uh, we'll be going with that. Um, other than that, I think I did participate with uh, Mayor DeLasso on the um, California Homemakers Food Drive, which I think went very well. Um, and that's my reports. All right, thank you very much. Councilmember Harvey. Okay, the only thing that I have to report on is December 19th was the Sonoma County Waste Management Agency meeting. And the only couple highlights that I'd like to give you is the first thing is they are um, getting very close to having updated polystyrene model or ordinance language. So at some point they will be circling back um, with you, city manager, to get that moving. And then the other thing was we had to um, do a second amendment to the e-waste e handling agreement. The, vendor that was doing it went out of business. As one might imagine, it's hard to get rid of e-waste and things, so I won't go into all of those details. Uh, the one sad thing that came out of all of this is that um, the new vendor will not be accepting items like vacuums and fans and small appliances um, that they call household scrap because there's basically nothing that they can do with it at this point. Um, so um, they'll be looking to see what else they can do about that. But that's a sad thing because it does mean that those things, until we find another solution, will, will be landfilled, which is not a direction that we want to move in. But anyways, as we all know, things change. But that is all I have to report on. You know, if I could add to yeah. that too, um, you know, at work we try to have 100% um, waste-free events, and we do <clears throat> barbecues where we thank all the volunteers, a number of the volunteers in the park. There's usually about 400 people that come, and we have had past events with zero waste. We've, we've had compostable plates and or utensils where we ask people to bring their own, um, the same with the cups, and then the food scraps get you know recycled it, it's just it's a pretty intense effort but it works really well and now we're finding that a lot of the compostable items that people aren't taking those anymore that used to take them and do whatever magic they did with them and that's really it's getting to be um, harder and harder so you know i'm wondering how the county is kind of looking at that issue but the problem with a lot of that stuff is that it says postable on it but it's all relative in time so it will eventually compost but the the problem is is having a product and creating a product and and having that amount of time so so that's sort of the the kind of downside to that is eventually will compost yeah. but not in a reasonable amount of time so products will get better they're they're you know coming up with different products um, and um, I, I think over time it'll get better but that's kind of one of those drawbacks uh, drawbacks to that but yeah. I have faith that thing will, things will change I hope better. so yeah that would be uh, a good thing all right council member Landman Nothing to report tonight. excellent report out thank you very much <laughs> vice mayor Skillman um, I was gone for a good chunk of time between our last meeting and this one, but um, I did attend a new mayor's reception. It was sort of an informal gathering, so I met several people who have been appointed mayor um, th for this year, and um, the uh, mayor of Windsor uh, created sashes. So if you have missed out on getting your sash, I, I do know who to contact for that. Um, but anyway, that's, that's all I have to report out. Are these Quimby style sashes? They're red, white, and blue. Yeah. It's lovely. I, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll definitely get back to you on that one. All right, um, just a couple of items from me. We had our Ag and Open Space meeting back in uh, mid-December. That was a meeting where um, an issue had been brought to the mayors and council members' executive committee of um, a member
member from the mayors and council members who's on ag and open space who had um, volunteered to then get on a subcommittee for the uh, matching grant program cycle, which is every other year. And then that individual was told, you can't participate because your city has an application in there. And so then the question came, well, I mean, why can't I just sort of, like we would do at our council meetings, recuse myself when that issue comes up, but still be involved with, since, you know, you had to read a volume of information. So um, it became a very hairy topic. It went to the Board of Supervisors. They weighed in. So um, we brought this to our, our last meeting. And as chair, my words of wisdom were that, and I wrote it down so I could read it right that night, uh, that we have an opportunity to look at an issue and see what, if any, changes we might recommend to the board, which is the Board of Supervisors, and to have a productive conversation. I literally went around the room person by person for every, from every committee member, including our two youth members. We have uh, a young man and a young woman. And they probably had just the most relevant comments out of everybody that was there. Um, because there's people that represent um, environmental groups, uh, realtors, bless you. Um, and so it's kind of this broad group. And there's three appointed that come from mayors and council members. So uh, it was a great discussion. I didn't want any final action taken that night. I just wanted the discussion to take place and then to sit on that process for a month till we meet again, which is out in a couple of weeks, we're gonna meet again. And we still may not have uh, a resolution at that time. I mean, it's a program that's every other year. We got a little bit of time. You know, it's not like we have to have a decision right away. Um, but I thought, so in, in lieu of appointing the subcommittee for the matching grant program, and the cycle to appoint subcommittees in our bylaws is in January. So I said, in lieu of doing that, why don't we wait until that cycle comes up, see what proposals come in from the different jurisdictions, then you can appoint a subcommittee or have people volunteer. And if there's a Katati project, I would simply say, I'm out of the process, that's fine. That was me, it's okay, sorry. I really, you know, being an Italian and having a microphone, it's just a curse. All right, so that was that. Um, the discussion will continue and we'll see where it goes. On, um, on the 22nd, uh, Councilmember Moore mentioned the food drive that we had over here. This was now the fifth or sixth annual food drive. We put food boxes together for about 125 um, needy families. And uh, it's just, it's a great event. It's amazing how organized um, California Homemakers Association is and how effective they are in getting donated food from, you know, several dozen frozen turkeys and frozen hams, canned goods, fresh vegetables and fruits, and so on. So um, it's a great event. And I cleaned up and I was out of there by 2.30. That was awesome. That was a world's record for me. And uh, also, uh, several of us took part in a lighting ceremony on Gravenstein Way where we judged Christmas lights in that neighborhood. And uh, it was during a lovely rainstorm, so our papers were, you know, by the time we got back in to look at our numbers, the papers were all like this and you couldn't even read the numbers we did. But we had a great time. Several um, family members came out and greeted us and uh, one woman did bribe us with brownies. I'm not sure that they won. I can't remember if I recall. They did? <laughs> they did. Extra points. I guess that brownies. wasn't so good. Yeah, so sorry about that one. Um, but anyway, that was a fun event, and um, they, uh, they really did a great job in their neighborhood. I'm sure their electric bills are going to be through the roof, but that's their issue. Okay, I have lost my agenda. There it is. Now we will move on to public comment on non-action agenda items. Item 17, Ms. Alderman. Okay, on future agenda items, I think you need to have a item on um, citizen participation at the, and what is really happening. Um, tonight there is Eric Kirchman and I are the only real citizens for the last 
in the audience. There's also Dustin Mateo, who's the far with the farm, and then there's the the guy from the um, on the plan. The <laughs> I don't know what, um, but this has gone on for a lot. You guys are not. It's your show. This you and you take down anybody, any citizens who try to speak. You did it again tonight with me. You need to knock this off and put this on an agenda item to get people in and in respect their opinion um, and allow them without tearing them down every freaking time. Okay. The other um, are on the city manager's report. Um, um, Damien always uses this recreation department as a public half of his report. There, it's not his successes. It's Ashley Wilson's successes on a sh little bit of budget. She's done wonders. I have nothing, but you guys spend less than one percent of the city budget on recreation. Most cities with senior and, re and in California, the average is 15% for senior services and recreation problems. You have no senior services. You have n the recreation classes for adults are contract classes and cost like $12 a class. There's not, there's not, it, it's all this emphasis on the children and you've skipped out a whole lot of other people. You're, you're affecting people's lives by your actions and you act like it doesn't matter. Teenagers have nothing, hardly anything here. You, how, long, how many years have you planned, done that? Put the things on the agenda. D make a difference. Don't just be up here and put on a show every week, every other week, because that's what it's getting to be. So um, anyway, that's about it. And. I've got to say this because Vicki is another one that called me psycho over three years ago. Um, I'm tired of being called psycho. I am not psycho. I am very um, together and I, this has been used against me way too long. You guys need to really stop. I am very honest, very intelligent and definitely not psycho and stop using it against me. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kirchman. Yes, I would ask you uh, when Ms. Walton returns at the next meeting that you ask her her opinion and perhaps if she's gotten one from her colleagues on the fact that she is at Sonoma State University at the Salazar building. And having spent three years prior to the Tech High ever coming into being, um, I researched other technology institutions and it was determined that being at Sonoma State or at least close to Sonoma State makes a great deal of sense. I would also ask that you, when you, and if you meet with the school board, that you too suggest, depending upon what Ms. Walt has to say, that they house the Tech High School either on the um, <coughs> eastern portion of uh, uh, Rancho Cotati or somewhere other than miles from the university in a small abandoned building. To have the Tech High in a, in a building because it's convenient is not at all what I learned in three years of preparation. It's not the way the Tech High School is operated. It is very important that it be at least close to the university so that it can utilize being there. Um, again, I don't have any problem with it being in surplus buildings, which they do have at Rancho Cotati. So um, if you can articulate it for her if I'm not around, does she believe that it's good to be at, um, and I want to be as clear as I can, at Sonoma State as she has experience, would it be an option to be in some buildings at Rancho Cotati or would she see a great deal of improvement by having it three miles from the university and essentially just in an isolated space where unfortunately the building was built for an elementary school and kids are gonna feel very 
very large in the facility that was built for some other use. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for that. We'll definitely ask. I wrote it down. Uh, anyone else? Dustin. Welcome. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Councilmember Moore for calling out the uh, grand opening of the Verona Fletty Ranch and Farmster Project. Once again, January 18th from 3 until 5. Uh, it's for all ages, 55 and up, under 5 years old. Come on out. Um, we're going to have a tour starting at 3 o'clock. Um, I would love to just extend a personal and professional invitation to everybody here um, to come out and join us. Um, and then last but not least, I wanted to get, extend gratitude to uh, Ms. Vicki Parker um, as she was one of the uh, folks I met with as well as Damien uh, in the proposal process and asked amazing questions and carried the city of Katati's uh, truest intent and vision uh, in that evaluation process. So um, they're very lucky to have you wherever you're off to and um, once again I hope all of you join me. So thank you and have a good evening. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. With that we will go to item 18. Uh, any information received after the agenda was posted? Unless we consider those comments we got from Mr. Barrich, which I will turn in, so we'll put that in there. And we are officially adjourned at 9 o'clock. Thank you all very much.